Okay, so what we're going to do is configure some uh, dynamic net. This will be a similar situation that you'll find in most uh, businesses or homes. And uh, we're going to do a multiple to one net translation. So we're going to have our local network here, which is 192.168.1.0 slash 24 in this uh, setup and 88888 <laughs> uh, for my public address here on the side of the router. So we're going to go into our router. I've given things IPs and that's that's it so far. Uh, we're going to go into our router, go into config mode, and we're ha we have to go into the interfaces and let them know if they're inside or outside. So that's where that inside and outside uh, part comes from uh, with the way that works. So we're going to go into the 00, zero interface, which is this one, closest to the quote internet, and tell it it's the outside. We're going to do IP NAT outside. I'm then going to go into 01, which is the inside interface closest to the local network. And we're going to tell it that it's an inside. We'll back out of that. And then what we have to do is create a pool to let it know what addresses on the local network we want to have translated. So we're going to do IP net pool give it a name of some kind so my nat whatever you want to name it and then we're going to tell it what start and end IP addresses so we'll do dot one six eight dot one dot I don't know we'll say just start at two why not uh, and then whatever the end address is so we'll just do the whole range <laughs> everything but the router and the uh, and the broadcast and then we have to tell it what netmask so we're going to say netmask oh whoops I had a typo I was complaining there we go 1.254 <laughs> So now we have to create a, an access list, actually. So we've made our pool to say what to do, but what, the way it works in Cisco routers is you have to match the traffic and then apply the NAT to that matched traffic. So we actually have to make a, a an access list that says permit the local network, and then we're going to match that so it gets translated. Sounds a little odd, but uh, that, that's the way you end up doing it. So what we have to do is just we can just make a basic standard access list, and this is actually a good use of standard access lists because uh, especially numbered ones because they're so basic. All we need to say is if it's coming from local network, everything's all good. So this will be pretty good. So we'll say access list one uh, permits, and we're going to do the local network. So one nine two one six eight one dot o, and then that was wildcard for here. Yeah, wildcard. Okay. So now we're going to apply that NAT policy. So we're going to actually create the real NAT policy. We've made our pool. We've made our access list. We're going to do IP NAT inside. And we're going to say source list. So we're access list number one. And then we're going to use the following pool and apply it to this NAT pool. And I call that my NAT. Now, if we go back, we'll do show IP net translations. And in here, when traffic occurs, we'll see the net translations show up. So what we'll do what we'll do is we'll do some test traffic and see if it shows up. If not, we'll get rid of this cloud. Uh, we'll see what happens here. And this won't work because there's nothing there, but that's okay. Good. Okay, good. It did show up. So we're trying to ping out to an imaginary IP out in this cloud, uh, one IP above what I gave my exterior interface for my router. 
Uh, and if you do show IP tra NAT translations, it'll show you your currently running translation. So what protocol is in use? What's the inside global? What's the inside local? Outside glo local and outside global. And so here's where you can uh, show these and change these if necessary. From a standard perspective of a, of a regular network, this is what you'll see often. It's It'll be pretty much like a one-to-one. -one. Only when you're really doing more advanced firewalling type uh, translations or port forwarding for uh, DMZs or something like that where you really get into fiddling with these. Uh, the basic procedure we just followed takes care of it. But what we've done is we, we've done this but without port address translation. So if our inside network gets uh, overloaded we end up having too many connections on certain ports well then it won't be able to handle that. So uh, what's recommended is we do port address translation with it. So we'll have to make a quick change to our configuration to accommodate that. So what we're going to do is IP and it really there's only one command that needs to be tweaked. The pool is fine and the access list is fine. So all we have to do is change the IP NAT command. So we're going to go into config mode and we're going to say IP NAT inside source list one pool my NAT and then if you check here you'll see it says overload overload and address translation that is port address translation so now we'll be fine if uh, we, we use up too many ports on the inside of our network uh, we, have, we have too many communications at once across a single IP uh, you can take care of some of that if you used multiple public IPs you wouldn't have to do port address translation but it's a relatively rare setup unless you're in an enormously large organization. Uh, so the, using the overload command is, is very common and, and I would say that it's a recommended setting. So we'll back out of here. can also take a look at some statistics. So if you do show IPNAT statistics, that'll give us some information about um, whether or not things worked or not. Obviously they didn't right now. <laughs> uh, what pools are in effect, um, what addresses are being translated, uh, if there's any problems going on, uh, what kind of translations you're doing, uh, basic statistical information. Most likely you won't be using that You'll probably be using the show uh, IP NAT translations and show run to do some diagnostics. Uh, or maybe some debug. You can do a debug IP NAT detailed. And that'll give you additional information about uh, what's going on. Okay. Some of them will accept that detailed command. That's fine. So you could do debug IP NAT depending on the router you have. One of the things you'll hear about uh, also is uh, d doing uh, the port forwarding, as I mentioned. So port forwarding really is just a term for doing a static NAT translation uh, from the outside to the inside. So uh, the way to do that is relatively easy in a Cisco router. So what we can do is uh, set up a quick port forward for a certain port. And uh, we'll pretend our PC is hosting some sort of uh, some sort of uh, web service or something like that. So what we'll do is from config mode is we're going to say IP NAT inside source static. We're going to tell what kind of traffic. So is that TCP, UDP? Uh, what do we want? So it's going to be a TCP connection in this example. And what is our address on the inside? So it's going to be 192.168. Uh, what was that? 1.2 was my PC. Then I'm going to ask what port is running on the local side. So that's our local inside port on this one. So what's running? We could say it's uh, pretending it's running a web service or something like that on port 8080. So we'll say it's 8080. Then what's your public address? So we're going to translate it to my fake public address on my router. And then what what port do we want on the outside, on the global side? So that's for that global local. It's kind of like inside, outside. Um, we're going to say what port we want to make it. So maybe on the outside, I want it to show up as 80. 
even though the web service on the inside is running on 8080. So this will do that, uh, that translation for you so that people on the outside don't have to type call in 8080. So if you do that, that will create that static address for us. And here you can see it actually shows up in there as a uh, inside global, inside local translation. And that's really all there is to it for a port forward. Now, theoretically, you'll have that set up for a DMZ, so it won't go directly into your local network, but off of a different interface on a firewall or router running firewall services. That way you don't expose your internal network uh, to the internet in any way. You do it off the DMZ, and then you can firewall off that network properly. Uh, and that's it for uh, doing this, and uh, we'll move on to a little bit about spanning tree and uh, wide area networks.